On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, we kick off the new year by looking at some of the many productivity improvements in Visual Studio 2022. On today's show, Mika Dumont is joining me to talk about productivity improvements in Visual Studio 22. Hi, Mika. Hi, thanks for having me. Happy 2022. Happy 2022. <laughs> Uh, decided that we would kick off the year talking about the latest and greatest version of Visual Studio, Visual Studio 2022, which released in the fall, so shortly before we all stopped working for holidays and whatnot. <laughs> uh, if you don't have it yet, absolutely go get it. There's the link. It is the greatest version of Visual Studio ever, even it better is. than the previous one, which was the greatest version of Visual Studio ever at the time. And as you would expect, tons and tons of productivity improvements because every new version of Visual Studio improves productivity. And so welcome back to the show and thanks for coming on to share with us some of the many, many, many enhancements in the latest version. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> so you're, uh, I just want you to just dive right in. And let's see it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah. So today I'm going to just talk about all the latest uh, productivity improvements in VS 2022. Uh, so Visual Studio uh, does provide um, hints to help you maintain and modify your code in the form of code fixes and refactorings. And these appear as little light bulbs and screwdrivers either next to your code or in the margins. And these hints can help you resolve warnings and errors as well as provide suggestions. Uh, for example, here I'm getting a suggestion to use a new C Sharp 10 language feature to convert this namespace to a file scope namespace. Uh, this will go ahead and unnest the uh, class definition within the namespace, which will get rid of that space in the margin, uh, which ultimately just creates more space for your code. Hmm. So yeah. And that's new. It's it's, it's amazing. <laughs> it just uh, is amazing that with every version there are new and new productivity improvements. You would think that you that we'd got them all by now, but <laughs> there's always room for more, right? Yeah, there's always room for more. Especially uh, the C sharp language is just you know rapidly changing, and this mm -hmm. is like one of uh, I guess a customer favorite. Like tons of customers were like really excited about this new language feature. So. Cool. All right. Yeah. Um, and here I'm getting a uh, suggestion to help me resolve this warning by declaring this type as nullable. Uh, so pretty much this stars class, it doesn't have a construct constructor. So it's warning me to declare this as nullable since I never instantiated it. So adding this mm -hmm. uh, question mark over here is um, pretty much you know giving me warnings everywhere that I'm using this thing. Hey, maybe you need a null check or two. And so nullable reference types is a new uh, C Sharp 8 language feature, I believe. And so we recently um, now include nullable enable um, for new .NET projects. And if you have an existing .NET project, you can just add the nullable enable property to your wow. project file. Cool. Yeah. And you might have noticed when I was uh, talking about this namespace over here that we have this refactoring to change a namespace to match a folder structure. Uh, so we've had this refactoring for quite a while now, but now uh, you can apply this refactoring across your project and solution. So that means if I right click on a project name within Solution Explorer, I can go ahead and sync namespaces here to match my folder structure. Oh, cool. And yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but yeah, this just got mm -hmm. updated. Uh, we also added a new refactoring in the right-click menu in Solution Explorer, remove unused references. So this was a huge deal. Uh, tons of customers the, have been asking for this. At the solution level? <laughs> at the solution oh. level. <laughs> at the project level. So yeah, you pretty much can remove- At the remove, project level, okay. Yeah, you can remove uh, project references and new packages that have no usage. Um, and if you want, you can also keep the ones that you want. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And yes, I wish to continue. That's and, my uh, new that favorite will... feature. I know, it's pretty <laughs> awesome. 
So tons of people have asked for this. So we're really excited that we finally got in. <laughs> so it's only at the project level or not the solution level, right? Yeah, not yet, but we yeah. are working on our backlog currently. So definitely uh, check us out on uh, Roslyn. We're open source. And uh, you can go ahead and upvote that support so we can add it. Okay, cool. But, yeah. Um, and so code fixes and refactorings are powered by Roslyn Analyzers. And so Roslyn is just the code name for the Visual Basic and the C Sharp compiler. Mm -hmm. But it's not just your ordinary compiler. It's also a set of open source APIs that anyone can use, even you. So Robert, if you're inspired by these productivity features and you want to add your own custom code fixes and refactorings, you can write analyzers uh, yourself and ship it as a NuGet package. Um, so for example, the .NET 6 SDK has a bunch of analyzers that are included by default that a bunch of folks in the .NET team uh, wrote. So you automatically get guidance on best practices when writing C Sharp and Visual Basic code. Mm -hmm. And you can view all these analyzers in an editor config. And so an editor config is a single file and it just helps you maintain consistent code by defining coding conventions. And it can live with your repository um, and use the same source control. This way the coding convention guidance is the same for anyone on your team who clones from that repo. Right. And um, we recently added a new UI for editor config. Ooh, nice. It used <laughs> yeah. to just be a gigantic text file, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, it used to be, let's see, you can, you can still open it if you want this text file, but yeah, it used to look like this. Yeah. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> and uh, lots of people kept pinging me and they're like, hey, like, what's the syntax for this uh, code style? And, um, you know, we would always like point them to the docs, but now you don't need to have the docs open while you try to configure the different severities um, of your different coding conventions. Uh, you can now just view everything in this UI and it's pretty intuitive. Nice. Um, and you can go ahead and disable individual um, analyzers. You can also configure the severities from here. Uh, we recently, in 17.1 Preview 2, added naming styles, which is brand new. So if you want to add some sort of uh, naming style convention to your code, such as interfaces should all start with the letter I, you can go ahead and do that from here. <laughs> and uh, we also and that, have... Uh, that's in 17.1? Yeah, Preview 2. Okay. All right, so 17.1, uh, the GA is just around the corner. Yes, it <laughs> is. as specific as we can get. <laughs> yes, that is as specific as we can get. Okay. <laughs> um, and what I mentioned earlier is this analyzers tab. So here you can have all the latest uh, .NET code quality uh, analyzers as well. You can just cool. scroll through all of these. You can search through it. Uh, you might notice up here, I have some called XUnit. That's because I have the XUnit uh, extension installed and XUnit also ships their own analyzers. So they will automatically show up in the editor config UI. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So, um, so again, you can configure different analyzer severities from the editor config, or you can also do it from um, the light bulb. And so one of the newer analyzers that we added is allowing you to simplify new expressions. Uh, this is a fairly new language feature. And so you pretty much don't have to repeat the type anymore. It's already on the left side. So repeating it on the right side is just uh, duplicating information needlessly. And that's so- That's what VAR was invented for, right? That's what what is it? VAR. <laughs> what did you say? VAR. Yes, yeah. So, um, so pretty much this is, yeah, this is, um, you can, that is exactly why, or if you want, you can simplify this. And so here I have it as three dots, which makes this analyzer show up as a suggestion. Mm -hmm. And if I want, I can go ahead and bump up the severity of this analyzer, you know, through my editor config or through the light bulb. And I can go ahead and oh. bump this up to, let's say a warning. And this will go ahead and, um, have this uh, severity show up with like a squiggle. And then if I open up my error list, it just makes it a bit more obvious now. That that assumes a huge degree of, of like self-control <laughs> <laughs> and diligence that you would 
purposely look at a code like that and and say, oh, I need to train myself to be better. So <laughs> I'm going to make this a warning or an error to force myself once and for all to stop doing it. Yeah. Or it could just be your teammate that's like really annoyed that you keep doing this. So they just go ahead and make this into a, a warning or an error. Mm -hmm. And that means everyone who's, you know, that's right. Phone uses that repo will now get a warning. So. Or, or you, I mean, we talked mm -hmm. about this before. It'd be an awesome April Fool joke to change all of these things to errors. And then <laughs> yes. an unsuspecting person builds the project, there's 8,000 errors. <laughs> yeah, they would have like anxiety. They'd be like, oh my God. It'd be hilarious. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I mean, well, what's really cool that I actually want to show next is like, let's say you do have all these warnings and errors and you want to quickly get rid of it. Mm -hmm. um, you could, of course, you know, apply a code fix um, to simplify this and you can apply this to your document, your project, or your solution, uh, you know, all in one go really quickly. Oh. Or uh, you can use a new command that we added in .NET 6 called .NET Format. So I can go ahead and run .NET format in the command line. So I'm going to go ahead and open the Visual Studio Integrated Terminal, which is full back tick. Let me actually move this down a bit. For being able to say moon moon one equals new is new in .NET 6? It's a fairly new language feature. I believe it is new in .NET 6 or .NET 5. But, oh, okay. um, but yeah, so you don't need that. Um, anymore. So here I can just go ahead and run .NET format. So let me first save this since I changed the severity. And then I can run .NET format. And this is new in .NET 6. And uh, this will pretty much um, apply the coding convention preferences that were set in your editor config across your project or your solution all in one go. So if you do have a bunch of these warnings and errors, you can just run .NET format to just go ahead and fix all of that up. I'm just gonna say yes to all, and voila, notice that it automatically got rid of my warning. That's yeah, cool. it's one of my favorite new features. It's wow. so awesome to just have that. Is that gonna be moved into the IDE or will that always be a command line thing? Yeah, we're actually doing work to move that into the IDE. We're going to hook it up to uh, Code Cleanup. So oh. you can just run Code Cleanup and it can do that. And it'll just read from your editor config. So, I mean, you see all these editor config rules, like .NET Format will actually go ahead and apply mm -hmm. whichever ones are set to warnings or errors. Sweet. So, <laughs> yeah, it's really, really awesome. Cool. So, um, Roslyn also uh, has an API for completion providers. So anyone can write their own custom completions that show up in the IntelliSense list. Uh, so for example, one of our community contributors wrote this one, which is IntelliSense completion for operators, uh, which will now appear in the IntelliSense completion list. So notice I have all these operators. Mm. Um, and we also added a filter for it too. So that's brand new. <laughs> cool. Yeah, um, we also have completion for indexers. So notice if I select this, it actually adds the square brackets um, and it erases the dots. So it recognizes that this is a call that I'm doing on a type and it listed in the completion list. Um, whereas before it might not have been accessible because I already uh, typed a dot. Let's see, we also have uh, IntelliSense completion uh, for await within an awaitable expression. So I'll just show you that real quick. And here I'm going to use smart break line, which is also a brand new feature. So if I type shift enter, it will go ahead and add the curly braces for me and it places my cursor precisely where I want it to be, which is in between the curly braces. Yeah. <laughs> so that's brand new. Um, so here, oops, if I go ahead, and type await, it now shows up in the completion list. So oh, cool. that is brand new. Yeah, and that we just added in 17.1. Okay. Yeah, so some of these things are in 17.0, which is the current GA version. Some of them are in 17.1. Um, so as long as people are updating the Visual Studio on a regular basis, then 
Um, even if there's a couple things that they don't have yet, they'll be coming very, very soon, right? Yes. Okay. Be. But we should all yeah. be used to updating on a regular basis anyway. So I don't think any of that's new. Yeah, yeah, you should. And it's definitely, it always helps to use the preview versions too, so you can just get yep. the latest and the greatest. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <so. laughs> cool. <laughs> Uh, cool. Yeah. So next, I also want to talk about navigation and code exploration, since it is an integral part of developer productivity. Um, so we recently added a new stack trace explorer window. Uh, so let's say you get a stack trace from a customer that encountered a bug. You can now paste that into the new stack trace explorer window and navigate to the code where the bug is. Ooh, yeah, cool. this is... This is a huge deal. Uh, we just added this in 71 preview too. So hopefully, um, you know, folks will be able to use it really soon. Um, and you can go ahead and open the Stack Trace Explorer window by going to View, Other Windows, and you can select Stack Trace Explorer, or you can type uh, Control E S. And I already had a Stack Trace copied on my clipboard, and it automatically will just paste it in. So this mm -hmm. is the stack trace now, and I can go ahead and click on it and navigate to uh, where the bug is. Cool. Nice. Yeah, you can do this all from Visual Studio. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so in the margin here, you also might notice that I have this clip. Uh, this is inheritance margin. So this is on by default in Visual Studio 2022, and this helps you navigate the inheritance chain. And so here I can see that planet has a bunch of derived types. And if I click on Jupiter, I can go ahead and navigate to it. Mm. And I can see that Jupiter has um, default planet planet as its base types and it implements the interface gas giant. And I can see that gas giant has a bunch of Im implementing types. So inheritance margin just um, makes it really easy for you to go up and down and inspect the inheritance chain. That's cool. And that's, that's <laughs> on by default? Yeah, it's on by default in okay. Visual Studio 2022. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. And um, Visual Studio also provides hints for parameter names and types. Uh, so you can go ahead and view these inline hints by typing or pressing down Alt F1. And if I go over around calling date time, you can see that I have a year, a month, a day, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. And you can go ahead and turn these on by going to uh, Tools, Options, Text Editor. We have a proposed Visual Basic and C Sharp. Under Advanced, you can go ahead and just select the slight inline parameter name hints and type hints. And you can also configure the types of hints that you want to appear. So by selecting that, it'll now just be on by default. So oh, you can nice. Down Alt F1. Yeah. <laughs> and if I uh, scroll up, you can see that I now have my types back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's cool. And so um, now if you press Alt F1, they disappear. So that's a toggle. It's Is not that, a toggle. Oh, but oh. hey, that would be, that's actually a good design idea. We should uh, look into that. <laughs> it's like, go away. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I really love this feature. Um, yeah, it's really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and then you might notice here that I have uh, this underline. Uh, this represents reassigned variables, which I've turned on also in tools options. And this underline is letting me know uh, that this value is being written into multiple times in this method. And mm -hmm. I can also use the new value tracking feature to see details for how this value is being changed. So value tracking is available in the right-click menu. If you right-click on a member, and you can just select the track value source command. This will open the value tracking window where I can go ahead and um, analyze how this value is being changed throughout my code. Um, and another feature I want to call out is, let's say I want to see how uh, pull ties is being calculated, but I don't want to lose my place you know, where I'm coding, I can use the code definition window. And so the code definition window um, now only supports C Sharp and Visual Basic before it supported other languages like C++, but now we added support for C Sharp and Visual Basic like many years later. I mean, mm -hmm. the code definition window is pretty old, but um, we finally added support in 17.1. And so if I go to view code definition window, 
and I click on pull tides, it should show up here. And I can just go ahead and uh, view how the code is being defined oh, here. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so those are most of the features that I wanted to show today um, in Visual Studio 2022. And um, I also have a blog post that just came out a few weeks ago. So you can also check that out, which has mm -hmm. many more features and um, also talks about these features that I showed today more in depth. So, yeah. Awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. So what are the major things coming up in the next couple of releases? What do you think? Major areas of improvements? So I think what you mentioned before with the uh, .NET format just being built into Visual Studio. So code mm -hmm. cleanup hopefully will come in soon. Um, we also, again, Roslyn is open source, so you can definitely check out our backlog there as well. And um, But yeah, definitely code cleanup. We're also looking into snippets and we're doing a ton of things with um, the IntelliCo team as well. Um, just providing, you know, suggestions at the right time. So having code fixes and refactorings kind of show up mm -hmm. um, while you're in the process of applying one. So using the smarts and the AI <laughs> to enhance our code fixes and refactoring. So definitely also look out for that. Cool. All right. So thanks so much for coming on. As always, awesome stuff. Thank um, you. Some some really cool ones in there that I would see using every day. And then a bunch that I would kick myself for not remembering are in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great way to kick off the year. So thanks so much, Mika. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox. Mm -hmm.